would like to start this presentation thanking uh, the scientific committee for this kind invitation uh, uh, for the Saturn project on behalf of all the members of uh, Saturn project. Um, sorry. Um, I am the coordinator of uh, this uh, uh, Italian project uh, together with Nicola Longo and uh, Alchiede Simonato and uh, this uh, is a multi-center retrospective uh, national study including data coming from 16 referral Italian centers and we included uh, in this database uh, all the patients uh, who underwent partial or radical nephrectomy for localized or advanced uh, uh, RCC in the period between 1995 and 2007 and we performed for all cases the follow-up in 2009 and at this moment uh, we have the possibility to evaluate the results in more than 5,000 uh, cases. In one of the first papers of this experience published in 2010 by my colleagues Giacomo Novara in the European Urology about the uh, validation of the 2009 version of the TNM staging system, uh, we noted that uh, uh, histologic subtypes turned, uh, turned out to be an independent predictor of cancer-specific survival at multivariable analysis. And therefore, this observation uh, supported our uh, convention and our idea that uh, renal cell carcinomas are different um, uh, different uh, uh, types of tumors with different morphology, with different molecular characteristics and as, at the same time with different cytogenetic findings. And this concept is uh, always present and is considered also when we look at, at the different uh, response of these uh, tumor histotypes uh, for medical uh, therapy and uh, usually the most important guidelines like NCCN consider uh, papillary RCC in the big folder of the no clear cell histology. But we must pay attention when we put together all the different tumor histotypes in the no clear cell uh, folders because um, as you can see in this slide, we have uh, chromophobe RCC, papillary RCC, but also unclassified and Bellini tumor with uh, a prognosis significantly worse in comparison with papillary and chromophobe histological subtypes. And the same consideration uh, uh, were um, from this paper uh, published in 2008 in the BJU International from Capitano and uh, uh, co-workers. Uh, co As you can see also in this experience, the survival of papillary RCC is in the middle between chromophobe and clear cell RCC. And again, when we look at the most important paper published in the literature in this field, we can observe that the percentages of the five-year cancer-specific survival is uh, uh, in the middle between uh, the uh, worst prognosis represented by clear cell RCC and the best prognosis represented by chromophobe. But I ask you to pay attention to these differences in the five-year cancer specific survival between uh, these two studies, one coming from Mayo Clinic after slight revision process and another one that is a multi-institutional study uh, from uh, uh, European centers in which uh, we observed uh, a five-year cancer specific survival significantly lower but without slight revision of the uh, uh, cases. And this is an important message because in these uh, little uh, studies published by myself in 2006, we demonstrated that for papillary RCC, the originally assigned um, uh, cases, the uh, cancer-specific survival is different uh, in comparison with the cases uh, assigned as papillary RCC after slight revision. And this is very important above all when we consider it in the retrospective analysis cases observed and treated before 1997. And for this reason, we started with this study with a uh, uh, Saturn project, uh, including uh, uh, cases uh, uh, observed and treated from 1997. And this is the publication in the European, in the BJU uh, in, uh, Urology about the prognostic factors in papillary RCC. Our task was to evaluate the prognostic factors in uh, 577 cases. Uh, 
observed in this multi-institutional experience. As you can see, looking at the characteristic of patients, we have a mean age of 62 years. The majority of these present show with asymptomatic disease, and we performed in 62% of cases radical nephrectomy, in 32 cases an elective nephron sparing surgery, and in 6% in 6 of cases an imperative nephron sparing surgery. But very important when we look at the pathological characteristics of this tumor, we uh, observed that 80% of the cases were localized tumors, and only in 10% of the cases we have patients with lymph node involvement or distant metastasis at presentation. And very important is that 30% of cases uh, were grade 3 or 4 according to uh, Furman classification, and this patient can be considered uh, uh, as a type 2 according to the classification of the lound and uh, ebull. And uh, concerning oncological outcomes, uh, in this experience, uh, we uh, have a uh, median follow-up of uh, 39 months with uh, 464 patients alive, and this is free, uh, with a median follow-up of 42 months. 40% uh, of cases had a disease progression, 11% uh, of cases died for the disease, and 5% of the cases uh, died for other can uh, causes uh, not correlated with the kidney cancer. Looking at the recurrence-free survival, we observed a five-year recurrence-free survival of 85.5% of the cases, and the 10 years recurrence-free survival uh, was 73% of the cases. And when we analyze our data, uh, according to univariable and multivariable analysis, we showed that pathological T stage uh, was not statistically significant at the multivariable analysis, and only lymph node involvement and presence of distant metastasis and the nuclear grading turned out to be independent predictors of recurrence-free survival in this patient. This is a very important message, above all, for the TNM classification, because I, I am convinced that uh, the majority of the information uh, coming uh, from the literature are uh, coming from clear cell RCC, and perhaps in our uh, TNM system uh, works and works very well for clear cell RCC, but probably uh, the situation for papillary or chromophobe or other uh, tumor histotypes is uh, uh, completely different, and therefore this could be considered uh, in the future. Uh, other very important message is grade 1 and grade 2, as you can see. The survival is, is significantly different in comparison with uh, grade 3 and grade 4 uh, cancer. But uh, the most important um, um, prognostic factors are represented by lymph node involvement. As you can see, patients with lymph node involvement at the diagnosis uh, showed a five-year uh, recurrence-free survival of 26.8% of the cases, and also the patient with distant metastasis showed a similar five-year recurrence-free uh, survival. What's about cancer-specific survival? This is the um, uh, survival curves uh, showing the five years and ten years cancer specific survival and at the multivariable analysis uh, we had the same uh, results that uh, I uh, showed before for uh, recurrence free survival. Again uh, the only difference is, is that mode of presentation turned out to be an independent predictor of cancer specific survival and as you can see incidental tumor showed uh, uh, cancer specific survival significantly better in comparison with patients with local symptoms or, above all, with patients with systematic uh, symptoms. Of course, uh, our study uh, has some uh, uh, study limitation. The first one is that this is a retrospective analysis. At the same time, uh, we included uh, data coming from 16 centers, then this is a multi-surgeon series. Uh, the specimen uh, was evaluated by multiple pathologists without slight revision, and uh, the treatment for disease uh, recurrences was not standardized. And again, uh, without slight review, it was 
was uh, not possible for us to assign correctly uh, the uh, subdivision of the papillary RCC in type 1 and type 2 according to uh, the Lawent and Ibley uh, classification. And it seems to be that this is important according to this paper published by UCLA showing that type 1 tumor is uh, significantly better in comparison with type 2. But I would like to ask you to pay attention when we use this, this subclassification between type 2 and type 1 because looking at the literature, uh, uh, this uh, subtyping remains difficult and different percentages of type 1 and type 2 are reported in the published series. This means that it is very difficult for the pathologist uh, correctly assign uh, the type 2 papillary and then uh, we need to have very experienced pathologists to have correct um, evaluation of this uh, parameter. Another uh, important uh, point that it, uh, it, it was not evaluated in the Saturn project was the role of nuclear grade. Uh, in this publication, some pathologists support the use of the nuclear grading uh, instead of the formal grade uh, for papillary RCC. And in this more recent paper uh, coming from the US uh, UCLA, Clayt and co-workers uh, showed that, that uh, nuclear grading seems to be uh, more uh, predictive in comparison with the nuclear grading, as you can see, looking at the different values of the concordance uh, index. Another param parameter that it was not evaluated because uh, was uh, uh, available only in a, a small percentages of our cases was uh, coagulative necrosis. As you can see in the experience of the Mayo Clinic, coagulative necrosis for papillary RCC is not important. Vice versa, when we consider the experience of the UCLA, uh, necrosis turned out to be in papillary RCC an independent predictors of cancer-specific survival. Then, in conclusion, I think that uh, this data uh, can um, demonstrate that uh, papillary RCC is, is a low-risk um, uh, tumor recurrence and cancer-related death after surgery. At the same time, we must pay uh, more attention for patients with papillary RCC with lymph node involved involvement and presence of distant metastasis, and above all, uh, for patients with grade 3 and grade 4 uh, nuclear grading, according to uh, Foreman. Uh, more attention uh, we must pay for the uh, correct allocation of the subtype and sub uh, 1 and 2 uh, in this category of tumors, and I think that to have more and more information and to better um, uh, identify the uh, characteristics of, the, uh, of this tumor, we must uh, consider in the next future uh, more, uh, more studies con including molecular and cytogenetic prognostic factors. Thank you so much for your attention.